Sure. Dear Ben and Nathan, as I get my documents in order for the upcoming admissions cycle, I'm stuck on whether or not to write an addenda about my LSAT scores. When I first took the test in 2018, I was a full-time student working 30 plus hours a week and ultimately scored a 161. However, I took the July LSAT flex and scored a 177, which I attribute to having a steady full-time job and the ability to set up a consistent study schedule. I'm sure it's common for people to improve on a retake, but some schools are asking for addenda if your scores have significant discrepancies what would you do? I don't know that I would go down the excuse route. If they want an addenda explaining a significant discrepancy, just say, um, I knew I could do better, so I took it again. And leave it at that. Scoreboard. Yeah. I mean, we see it all the time. We, how many emails did you get, Ben, this, cycle, this last, when the August flex scores came out? How many emails did we get with people talking about 20 point improvements? I don't know how many we got, but it's so many more than we've ever gotten before. And Dozens. Like we had like three 180s, right? At right. least. Right. And that's not accounting the ones who didn't reach out. I'm like, holy smokes. I don't know what's going on. Right. So you can improve a ton on the LSAT. It's a fact. Yeah. And if your official score, you know, like you, you took it before you were fully ready, unfortunately, you know, and you have a 161 on record. And then you, you know, started studying with us probably and ended up with a 177. And yeah, I <laughs> really one sentence, two sentences. I, I knew I could do better. My, my practice test scores indicated that I could do better. So I took it again. Yep. They can ask you a follow-up if they want, but we've never heard of anybody like admissions committees that don't actually ask people, right? We all know that a lower initial <laughs> official score is just a practice test score that's been revealed on your record. Yeah. It's, it's just like the idea that the 177 test takers didn't work to get there. I, I, I have a hypothesis which yeah. my hypothesis was recently confirmed by another bit of data, but my hypothesis is that they're asking you this question because they're fishing to see if you're stupid enough to disclose that you were accommodated for the retake. Oh, very interesting. Okay. This was a hypothesis have to. Yeah. that I've had for a long time, but let me read to you a question. This is a question on um, someone texted me this. So this is, this is from UW Madison. This is from their real application. Question number 20. Note, the following question is optional in bold. Because <laughs> they don't want to get in trouble with the ADA. <laughs> no, this is like illegal for them to yeah. ask this question. The following question is optional, but the information helps the admissions committee have a fuller understanding of you as a candidate. Do you have a disability that you believe the admissions oh committee should God. take into account in evaluating your file? Question mark. <laughs> oh my goodness. They just went out and asked it. We encourage you to provide further information in your personal statement than bold. This is purely voluntary and confidential. If you are admitted, a separate process will be used to request and determine reasonable accommodations. And then it's a yes or no. Do you have a disability that you believe That's the it. admissions committee should you, take into account in evaluating your file? Oh my gosh. And are they even so allowed people, to ask that as an optional They are question? not. That has got to be illegal. <laughs> that it has, has to be illegal. <laughs> under yeah. the ADA, yeah. There's all sorts of shit under there that's going to prevent that, I would assume. We should have somebody on the show. But... Um, it's, it's a reading comp they... it's a reading comp issue, right? It's an optional question, and that, that's an that's a question that you should not answer. You do not yeah, answer but... that, or you just put no and just move on. It's a radio <laughs> button. It's a, it, it. You have to choose. Well, it says it's optional, but it's a radio button, 
and I don't and you know, know how whether many people it defaults are gonna to think yes that's or no. Gonna help. A lot of people are going to think that's going to help their application. Exactly. Like, oh, I have a disability, so I'm going to say, and even if you don't, you say yes so that they treat you with. And what's softer. actually going to happen? Yeah. How, what's gonna actually going to happen, Ben? If you check yes on that and you put in your personal statement say, that you have ADHD? It's going to go against you. Especially. Why? If, what are they going to think? That you got extra time on the LSAT, which means yes. your score is bogus. <laughs> Yes. Not bogus. I'm sorry. It's not bogus. No, but... it is bogus. They give too <laughs> much extra time, Ben. It's not fair. Yeah. When people improve their score by like 10 points or 15 points instantly when they get accommodated, instantly. And it's not fair. I mean, <laughs> I have a recent one on one tutoring student who didn't know about accommodations. I told him about accommodations. He gets double time now. And he immediately went from like, couldn't possibly crack 160 to regularly scores in the 170s. Yeah. And it's because he's rich and had a fancy private tutor who told him that you could get accommodated and he got accommodated. If he checks yes on that question, because, you know, he's, he, he thinks that they're asking it with like an open heart or open, you know, like, oh, we want to know, we really want to accommodate, we want to help you, you know? <laughs> they immediately look at that and they go, oh, 170, yeah, yeah. They like roll their eyes. Okay, well, you were accommodated. So, of course, you scored super high. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a broken system. The law schools know it's broken. And so now they're fishing to see if you'll tip your hand basically yeah don't don't tip your hand <laughs> if you have a reasonable case for accommodations you should get accommodated it's a crazy advantage you should do it if you can yeah. but then do not tell the schools that you were accommodated jackson you want to weigh in on this exciting issue i just think it's crazy uh that they would that they would ask that i mean yeah, Let I'm surprised alone, they are. They're a law school. I mean, they would know this law inside and out, I think. They'd have professors who have taught about the ADA. <laughs> maybe the disclaimer that it's an optional question is enough. Somehow makes it legal. But, but you know, is it optional if it's a radio button? I guess you just don't even select. <laughs> if it doesn't have a <laughs> Once you've selected answer, something, you can't unselect a yeah, radio that's, button. Yeah, probably that's true, how they right? get you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not sure you're allowed to like, get, like I'm thinking about interview questions, right? Exactly. If, you, if you're in an interview and you ask someone if they're disabled, like that doesn't seem, but or then like you if say, you, Oh, it's optional. So you don't have to answer. You can a sit there and be quiet. It's a different legal issue, but like, you know, you're not allowed to ask women if they, ha if they plan to have kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, does it make it magically better if you're like, now this is an optional question. You, you don't have to have answer kids? this. <laughs> But you try to have kids. <laughs> and just like look at their reaction. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm surprised they're asking it. And, you know, the, about the accommodations thing, that Ninth Circuit case is what required LSAC to make the minimum accommodation time and a half which blows my mind before, I guess you could get 40 minutes or something, or I, I don't remember that, but it's, it's wild. It's a weird time and a half is the minimum. That's I've insane. never heard of someone getting rejected for accommodations. No, no, no. that's the, that's the modern world before the case. I almost never heard of anyone getting accommodations. People right. would ask me in class. I remember this, I remember this pregnant student speaking of pregnancy who was like, I am pregnant. I have to go to the bathroom all the time or something. And I have this other problem. And do you think I'll get accommodations? And I remember talking to her in the hall and I was like, have you ever had accommodations before? And she's like, no. And I'm like, no, you probably won't get it. Sorry. Good luck. And now it's completely flipped. It's a whole new world. Crazy. It's the upside down. Yeah. Any doctor's note, your normal physician. And it doesn't have to be anything real. It doesn't have to be dyslexia. It could be like no back pain. Yeah, have back pain. I, I need. I need, it. It really gives me a hard. I have a hard time focusing because of my <laughs> ingrown hair that I have, and <laughs> That's I, need, I need. I need. I need. I need reasonable accommodations, and they just immediately just stamp it. Boom! Time and a half. There you go. That's and, their minimum. 
and let's be clear, hey, we're, we're fairly progressive folks here. I'm, I'm not saying that there shouldn't, that the ADA shouldn't exist or that we shouldn't accommodate blind people with a braille test and extra time. I, I'm, I'm fully willing to give reasonable accommodations, but time and a half is too much extra time for most people. And, and most people who take it, the test in normal time, most people don't finish. Most people shouldn't finish in 35 minutes. But in 53 minutes, oh my God, it's. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, can you, well, think about how many people are like, if only I had five more minutes. Five more minutes would be a like, there's so many students with, with five more minutes, they would get like two more questions per section or like an entire extra game. game. Yeah. yeah. Or finish the reading comprehension passage and get all those questions right. And they're not getting five extra minutes. They're getting 18 extra minutes with time and a half. Yeah. And with double time, they're getting 35 extra minutes. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's too much. It's not, a, it's not a reasonable accommodation. It does not level the playing field. It, it's too much extra time. Well, it's funny too, when we're fielding questions, especially from like double time students who are like asking how to deal with all the time. They're like, now their problem is like, well, I'm going to be there so long. How do I, how do I manage this? I'm like, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. It's hard to feel sorry for somebody who's getting double time. I mean, I, whatever, I, I'm not questioning that you have issues or, or whatever it is that they got you that accommodation. I just, I don't know, do some meditation take a nap, whatever. Cause it is, I mean, it's so crazily, crazily extra time. It's just, um, I guess we should make a point here that if you are going to request accommodations, don't do the thing of, I want to make sure that I get time and a half. So I'm going to ask for double time because if you ask for double time, you're probably going to get double time and double time is uncomfortably long for a lot of people. I mean, it's just way too much time. Yeah. So careful what you wish for and um, get your reasonable accommodations. If you're entitled to them, get them but it's, it's, it's <laughs> hugely valuable. I mean, it's over the top valuable. It's a, it's, it's a fair proposition that it's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Well, yeah. I mean, if not more, my student that I was talking about earlier, you know, the rich kid who got private tutoring and the, the primary value he got out of the primary, uh, out of the private tutoring was me telling him, wait, what you had accommodations in college. you definitely get accommodated on the LSAT but yeah he he went instantly I'm telling you instantly he went from like 157 to like 167 hmm. and that's worth 100 grand you can look at the scholarship calculator and you can figure out that that's worth 100 grand lsatdemon.com slash scholarships play with the numbers you'll see cool yeah. 